Now, in verse 3, he says, "...we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." We go directly to God. You don't have to go through any form of emanation at all. If you are in Christ Jesus, we have access. That's one of the benefits of being justified by faith is access to God. And it's through our Lord Jesus Christ, as he makes it very clear here. And he says, praying always for you. Now, if you are making a prayer list of the Apostle Paul, put down the Colossians. He always prayed for them. They were on his prayer list. Now he said, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Now, I would emphasize that in a very particular way here. He's going to talk about the good points of these folk. And he puts together here, if you'll notice, faith and love and hope. And if you notice that, hope is in verse 5, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, and whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. And may I say the truth of the gospel means the content of the gospel, the great truths that pertain to the gospel of the grace of God, by the way. Now, you'll notice something, I think, here very important to see. Paul's talking now about their good points, and rightly so. They had faith toward God, and that is, by the way, for the past. Faith rests upon historical facts. God has a shut-up to a cross, and it's to believe God. You see, you haven't heard the gospel unless you've heard something to believe, not something to do, something to believe. It's what he did for you and me 1,900 years ago. Now, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's not a leap in the dark. It's a resting upon historical facts, and it's believing God. Now, that's for the past, but there's love for the present. And you notice he speaks here of that, and your love, which you have, to all the saints. And my friend, it's almost, I think, nonsense today to talk about how fundamental we are and then to spend your time crucifying the brethren, attempting to find fault with them, attempting to call them something less than you are because you are a wonderful saint and they just have not measured up to your high standard, and they're not separated like you are separated. My friend, the world today is not interested in that approach. The world would like to know whether you love each other or not. And the hypocrisy today of fundamentalism is it loves to knock the brains out of some brother and shows very little love in many places. Now, there are many men I disagree with about one thing and another. I can't expect them all to be perfect, of course. So I should bear with them, therefore, and pray for them. And I asked a man that, oh, he came to me to criticize one of the leaders today, and I don't agree with that leader on many of the things that he does. But boy, the Spirit of God's using him in a mighty way. And I asked him, I said, do you ever pray for him? Well, he says, of course not. Well, I said, I think you ought to. I think you ought to pray for him. God is using him. The Spirit of God is using him. And friends, these Colossians, they had some good points, and they had faith toward God. They were sound in the faith. They were fundamental. But they had love for the brethren, and that's important. And that is for the present, you see. Now, there's hope for the future here. Paul puts these three graces together for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. And I'd like for you to notice a little thing. Over in the 13th of 1 Corinthians, he lists these three there, but he lists them a little different. Now abideth, faith, hope, love. These three. He puts hope second, love last. Why? Because love's the only thing going to abide. It's the only thing. It's not only for the present. 
it's going to make it into eternity. So we need to begin to exhibit that down here upon this earth. How wonderful this is. Now he says, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, and that hope is the blessed hope, looking for the coming of Christ, and we're to love his appearing also. Whereof, he says, ye heard before in the word of the content of the gospel. Now, the gospel is a simple gospel. It's true. And you're asked to believe. You're asked to believe certain facts. But there are a lot of facts that are connected with the gospel. He's virgin born. He performed miracles. He's the God-man. And he died on a cross. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended back into heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit into the world on the day of Pentecost to form the church. And he's sitting today at God's right hand. Now, that position is given to us because of the fact that our redemption is completed. And we are asked today to enter into that rest that he offers to those that will come to him. But he has a present ministry of intercession for us and I think other ministries. And then he's going to come again. And that is all part of the glorious gospel, the content of the gospel, as Paul puts it here. 